Well, hello there. I didn't see you come in. Make yourself at home. Have a drink. While I give some attention to some underappreciated characters and storylines that I personally love. And I hope you grow to love as well. Hey there, everybody. Welcome back to another episode of Matt's Minis. Uh, today, we have Swamp Thing number 17, which is from July of 1975. So first things first, we got the cover here, and Swamp Thing is uh, wrestling with some kind of robot dog or goat or I don't know, some kind of robot animal, and he's being uh, approached or stalked by four more. So um, he is in danger. It looks like it's nighttime. It's pretty terrifying. He's going to take on some robots apparently in this episode. First, we see uh, <laughs> first page. If you remember from the last episode. Uh, Bolt has been kidnapped by uh, Nathan El Ellery, who was the head of the Conclave or one of the head leaders of the Conclave, who was defeated, we thought, in episode uh, six, I believe, which was the Batman issue, where he fell out of uh, a very tall window and presumably to his death, but apparently he did not. So he has come back. He has been torturing Bolt, the friend of Matt Cable and uh, Abby Arcane. Uh, for information, we're not exactly sure on what he wanted, um, <laughs> but he's trying to get information, and uh, he is in a wheelchair now, and he's got some kind of suit that you know allows him to live and whatnot. So um, he is on like where where his secret base is is some kind of Spanish mission looks like that was on the island that they uh, crash landed on, and uh, basically he's. He's been trying to get information out of Bolt, and Bolt is saying, Eat moose, you dirty! And then gets cut off by uh, Mr. E, as uh, the scientist calls him. And Mr. E is like, Dr. Pretorius, increase the electrocutions. And so they're just going to torture him until he gives him something, you know? And uh, then we see there's. Uh, there's a dude in a purple suit. It looks like he's got henchmen again. If you remember from, I guess it was issue five, maybe with the clockmaker issue. Uh, he's got some guys that look like the Phantom. They have like a full body suit that's either red. It was red in the last issue, but now it's like a purple. So they kind of look like the Phantom, that old school, uh, movie with Billy Zane. Or <laughs> it looks like there's like five Phantoms running around in this. But, uh, yeah, so he's got like all these henchmen have purple suits with the yellow, underwear on uh over that so they look kind of ridiculous but uh one of them turns to mr e and is like oh, there's an intruder coming up this way and there's two others moving from the west and mr e's like oh don't worry about it i've made a bunch of traps to greet our visitors there won't be anything left of them to bury when they get done with those traps so he has set something up and then we see one of those traps is sprung on the next page and Swamp Thing is being attacked by a, <laughs> it looks like, uh, like the danger Will Robinson, like the lost in space robot, but he's got a big fan in his stomach and he's got like eight arms. So the arms are trying to pull Swamp Thing into the fan, I guess, to get chopped up into little pieces. It looks like an old fifties robot. It's pretty funny looking. Um, we see this, this issue is actually called the destiny machine uh, and it's written by david michelini again and are of course by nestor redondo so swamp thing's fighting this thing he's trying to pull him he's trying to pull swamp thing into his stomach like i said and swamp thing does not want to go in obviously and he's like oh man these these arms are really strong like they could they could pulverize me and he's like i, I know i'll just shove this tree into the fan and that'll like throw a monkey wrench in there and then uh, he puts the tree into the fan. He rips the tree from its roots. And uh, and it doesn't do anything. <laughs> it just gets like chopped up into little splinters. And so um, so then he's like, wait a second. These arms are pretty, pretty stiff. Uh, I'll just pull one of these off and shove it in the fan. So he does that. And that works. The fan is instantly shattered. <laughs> and it basically, it, I guess it just uh, sits there while the fan's not running anymore and then it starts to vibrate and then it explodes so the robot is gone now and he's like "Ooh, that was close but you know who made that and why is why was this thing in the middle of the jungle is very weird uh so then we cut to uh, abby and matt cable and they're walking 
and they're in a different area. I think they said the two are from the are heading from the west. So that would be Matt and Abby. So they're walking, and we enter into their conversation in the middle because Matt's like, "What do you mean, Abby? What do you mean by odd?" And then Abby's like, "I don't know. This jungle just feels really evil." <laughs> Something about it is evil. And and then uh, Matt Cable's like, you know, you've been having a lot of these feelings ever since uh, we helped out with with that Father Bliss character and the evil demon. So they're kind of foreshadowing that maybe she's going to have some kind of powers or something that she got when she was around the demon, maybe. I don't know where they're going with that, but that's what it sounds like. And then they're like, uh, you know, they're talking about, oh man, we came to this stupid island and now we got to find Bolt. Um, and right when they think that, someone says, turn around real slow, friend. And it's uh, four of the <laughs> the phantom looking henchmen. And they're like, don't move. Don't even think about taking that gun on your side. And they all have Tommy guns. So they, uh, you know, they're prepared. And so they capture him and they're like, we're ha- we have orders to bring you in alive, but we'd hate, we'd hate to kill you if you disobey us. So, uh, they get him to move and they take him back to the old mission. And right away, right before they go through like the main door, Matt's like, something's weird about this. If I didn't know better, I'd say we were up against. And then they open the door and he's like, Nathan Ellery. And it's like right, right in front of them is the dude in the wheelchair from the conclave. <laughs> Just sitting there waiting for him, I guess. And then Abby's like, but but you died. Ellery's like, no, the Conclave wouldn't give up one of their top uh, operatives so easily. You know, I might have been immobilized, but I was resurrected and now I'm, you know, in a wheelchair. Um, and then they look over, they hear someone moan and they see Bolt's been like completely drained now. He's, I don't think he gave up any information, but he definitely uh, was electrocuted to almost... Uh, death so he's really weak and Abby's like oh my gosh Bolt and then uh, Matt's like if you slime whatever you've done to him I swear I'll do to you double and then um, the henchmen grab him and, and hold him down before anything else happens they say hey that other blip is still moving he didn't get killed what are we gonna do and Ellery's like oh don't worry I have something else for him so they see it Swamp Thing I guess before they didn't know a Swamp Thing because Ellery's like, well, well, it seems the fly has come to the spider. So I guess he didn't know uh, the other dot was Swamp Thing. (laughs) But Swamp Thing's walking towards him, obviously. And uh, he's just walking. He's trying to figure out where he's going. He's like, man, I wish I was a Boy Scout. I can't even figure out which way I'm facing. Then all of a sudden, a TV pops out of the jungle. (laughs) Swamp Thing's very surprised. and, And he basically has a whole flashback of... Uh, everything that happened to him from the explosion to his wife dying and him becoming Swamp Thing to him pushing Ellery. Well, at first it says, you know, he was going to kill Ellery and then he was like, no, I can't be like him. And he just kind of like pushes him away. But then if you remember from issue six, Ellery trips over his weird monkey abomination (laughs) pet and then uh he falls to his death from what he thought so he was all guilty apparently for killing this guy but it turns out he didn't kill him so then ellery's like i've been looking forward to this monster more than you can know in fact i've even provided an extra incentive for you to join me and he points the camera to matt cable and abby and now swamp things like oh my gosh i gotta save him ellery's like well why don't you come meet us over here and uh, I've left a couple of, of amusements along the way just to keep it more interesting. And so now Swamp Thing, he turns around, he hears a weird whirring, and uh, all of a sudden there's like this floating saucer with a magnifying glass It looks like, uh, kind of like snaking on the top of it. It's like a, a disc with a cobra on the top of it. Um, except this thing shoots like sunbeams that have been concentrated. So um, it starts shooting the Swamp Thing and he starts running away. Then Matt, you know, they're seeing this on the TV and he's like, but Ellery, why are you doing this? Uh, And then we get like the breakdown of what, what's supposed to happen. So basically um, Ellery's like, I don't care about the biorestorative formula anymore. I found uh, along with my scientist, he made a new invention, which is this machine. And he's like, (laughs) He's like, behold, the ultra cerebral ocitor. And I don't know what this thing does, but it says danger high voltage on it. Um, so it's just got, it's just got some uh, uncovered 
non-OSHA approved contacts or something just sitting right on the end of where you would put your feet, I think. So uh, it's basically a death machine for anyone who use it, but you know, whatever. Uh, <laughs> so, and then the, the doctor goes on to describe that this is a, he has discovered something called E-waves. The brains that relate those waves directly have leadership abilities. Uh, so like humans that have a high amount of E-waves are leaders and the ones who don't emit those E-waves are followers. So what his gizmo does is it focuses on the brains of everybody that's not in this protected area and it turns their brains to mush. So it makes it makes it makes their, their brains not have E-waves. So then Nathan Ellergy will be king of the world <laughs> Because he will be the only person who's not an idiot. So he's got plans. He's going to basically make the world dumb with this machine. And then he's going to be the only smart person. Uh, I guess except everybody else in that room too. So then we cut back to Swamp Thing. And he's running still from this thing. And he's like, man, it's like it follows me everywhere. There's no nothing I can do. There's no cover I can get from it. And then he realizes, wait a second. Maybe if I run towards the thing, it's not made to withstand its own beam. So he runs under the ship. And then the ship like shoots itself with its own beam. So it blows up. And then uh, one of the, the henchmen says, Mr. E, the controls on the sun disc just blinked out. Mr. E's like, oh, blasted swamp thing is more resourceful than I thought. Seems I will have to arrange a more suitable welcome for him myself. And so uh, <laughs> then Allergy leaves the room for some reason. And uh, I guess he's going to go prepare for swamp thing. So then Matt's like, Dr. Pretorius, uh, who's the scientist, he's like, why? You're not the criminal type. Why would you be helping this madman? And he's like, well, basically, I'm scared. I'm scared of all the stuff that's in the newspapers as far as like wars and deceptions and crises. And the world is dying, Mr. Cable, all because of uh, squabbles of global politics. And basically, he thinks only one, the only hope for the world is to unite under one man. So he's going to say that man is Nathan Ellery for some reason. So, so yeah, uh, he just figures, ah, I guess it might as well just be this guy. So that's why I'm, I'm on his side. And then Matt Cable says, Matt, mister, you're sick. And then, uh, we cut back to Swamp Thing and he's like, oh, finally. And he's like walking towards the mission and he's like, I finally found this place. Uh, it doesn't look like it has too much security. And then, Right as he's thinking that, he starts hearing what he describes as a pneumatic hiss. So apparently these are pneumatic. When he turns around and there's five, what he calls, robot wolves. So, so he looks at them and they're like these um, steel dogs, basically. Steel wolves, that we'll call them. They have pointy faces. So maybe it kind of looks like skulls, but if it was metal for the faces. But the, the bodies look wolf enough, I guess. But uh, he's like, robot wolves. I should have known Ellery would, ha Ellery would have something up his sleeves. And so uh, right away, they start jumping on him and fighting him. And uh, he doesn't look like he's having that much trouble. He's like, oh, like they're strong, but so am I. And, uh, you know, I have a hunch that if I apply enough pressure, even to a steel spine, it will. And then he like cracks one of the robo dog or robo wolves over his knee. And then the spine breaks and then he's like grabs another one by the mouth and he's like breaking its jaw open. <laughs> so he's not having that much trouble. Then he looks and he sees like on the parapets of the or the like the walls of the uh, mission, the henchmen are like, oh, wait, there he is. Let's uh, let's shoot at him. He's like beating the wolves. They're not even he's not even like worried about him. And so they start shooting at him and then they realize, oh, wait, yeah. <laughs> Guns don't work on him. I don't know why we keep shooting at him. They're like, luckily, <laughs> we got this gate to uh, protect us. And then <laughs> right when they think that, the <laughs> Swamp Thing is like, bam, right through the gate. And they're like, ah, oh, shit. So then, this is like the most fucked up thing ever. Swamp Thing like continues to walk. And the men are, the, the henchmen are like there. And all of a sudden, the robot wolves come in. And it says, terror paints the courtyard a fresh blood red. Um, as mechanized demons quit a mossy caked form for easier prey. So apparently the robot dogs are not on anyone's side. They're just on the robot wolf side. So they just want to kill stuff and they are like, Swamp Thing's too hard to kill. Let's just kill, kill all these henchmen. So that's what they did. They just kill all the henchmen 
Swamp Thing's like, sweet. They that that got their attention, and he just walks into the mission. And then uh, Mister E's watching him on on his little TV, and he says, "Blast that monster! It seems I've underestimated his tenacity. A mistake that could prove fatal if I linger here." And like. <laughs> I don't know how close that room is to the door that that Swamp Thing was going through, but it was very fast because within that second, he has like a second to turn around and then all of a sudden you hear Ellery and Swamp Thing bursts through the door and uh, the scientist is like, what? And then Swamp Thing just slaps him and knocks him out. Swamp Thing's walking up to Ellery and Ellery's like, you can't, you, you can't. And then Swamp Thing's looking and he sees Bolt and Bolt is still passed out and like super injured from being electrocuted. And he's like, I can't. You murdered my wife, Ellery, and turned me into these things. And God knows what else you've done to these people. No, I turned away one time, fat man. And my friends here have paid for that compassion in pain. Now it's your turn. And he <laughs> picks up Ellery, who's in a wheelchair and is basically like in an iron lung suit. <laughs> Ellery's yelling no and he just throws the man in his wheelchair against the wall and just totally breaks the man's wheelchair so the dude can't even walk or anything um, then we see his chair is really close to uh, the the machine that says high danger high voltage and the scientist runs over to Ellery and he's like oh my god what have you done and then uh, Swamp Thing thinks to himself what should have been done a long time ago the, the scientist is like, don't worry, I'll save you to Ellery. And Ellery's like out of it a bit. And he like is able to kind of tilt him up on his uh, wheelchair. And then the, the scientist is like, well, we'll go somewhere else. I'm sure the conclave will help. And then Ellery kind of looks and he says, Pre Dr. Pretorius, the cables, the wires. And then uh, the Pretorius, Dr. Pretorius is like, no time to fix them now, sir. I have to get you to safety. The world needs you, Mr. E. And as it's like, he's saying this as the wires from his chair are like about to cross and touch the contacts of this bed where it says danger, high voltage. <laughs> and basically it does touch <laughs> and it just fries him. And it says the sudden flash of electron fire etches the room with harsh shadows, filling the mission lab with the fury of energy unbound as well as the acrid stench of charring flesh. <laughs> and then there's just like a melted chair, like a pile of melted metal chair, and then fire and human goop on the floor, I guess. So, <laughs> so Ellery is dead. And uh, Matt Cable's like, hey, Alec, give me a hand. And then they both go help Bolt uh, out of the chair. And, <laughs> and then the scientist is like, but... But you can't leave now. What about Mr. E? And Matt's like, uh, he's burnt to toast, Pretorius. Now get out of the way. And so they leave him there. <laughs> and he's like, I don't know what to do. And then as they're walking away, you just see the robo dogs running up. <laughs> so he's just like about to get murdered by all the robo dogs. And they don't give a fuck. They're like, whatever. <laughs> we don't care about you. So then uh, we cut to... It says addendum a half hour later. They're in a helicopter. And uh, Matt asks, uh, how's he doing, Abby? And Abby says, he's breathing, Matt, but just barely. So they're, they're really trying to get him back to uh, the mainland. And they say, uh, Matt says, well, I'm pushing this thing. And I've radioed ahead to Miami International for an ambulance. The only thing to worry about now is. And then uh, suddenly it says, uh, uh, it looks like Ellery's got the last laugh after all. This this thing's out of fuel. And you see like the helicopter says sput, 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 sput. Like the, the fuel's going out. They're like, we can't do anything. Uh, we're going down. And then uh, Matt says, just strap yourself in and pray. And then that's it. That's where the issue ends. So next time, uh, what's going to happen? We don't know. They're going to crash in the water or somewhere else. We'll find out. Uh, on that note, uh, if you got any comments, questions, or suggestions, you can email me at planes, trains, and comic books, all one word, at gmail.com. And until next time, stay swampy. Okay.